Welcome to the Bravado Blitz. I'm your host, Eric Shen, and this is my co-host for the last three times. Thank you. Hadn't kicked you out yet, right? No. All right, so uh, uh, we're on our third episode of the Blitz. and uh, Preseason is over. Preseason's over. All right, so week number three coming up, and we have a couple guest coaches this week from the Shakota Wildcats, and you follow Iron Heads. So strap on your helmet, stick around, because the Blitz is here. <laughs> Welcome back, sports fans. I don't know about you, Brian, but I'm beginning to get or enjoy this football stuff. Get the hang of it. Nothing like the Friday Night Lights, Eric. Friday Night Lights. Got to love it. And let's not waste any time getting this episode going, so we'll hand it off to you. First, we're going to check on the teams and where they're rated at OK Preps with our partner there. Uh, starting at 6A2, the Stillwater Pioneers move into the number one spot after their 44-21 win over Norman North. The Ruffers from Muskogee drop one spot to number nine after the heartbreaking loss to Midwest City. Number three, Midwest City. Number that. three, yeah. Jack. All right, moving on to 5A. Tahlequah Tigers jump into the 5A rankings in number eight after they knocked off a then number eight Coweta Tigers, 47-37. The Tigers host the 4A Salisaw Black Diamonds this week. Good win for the Tigers. Was a good win. For 4A, the Poto Pirates come in at number one once again after a convincing 38-16 win over the 5A McAllister Buffaloes last week. The Wagner Bulldogs stay at five after the 35-18 win over Pryor. Broken Bow stays at number seven after a bye week, and the Hilldale Hornets stay at number nine after the 31-28 win over the Shakota Wildcats. And that was a heck of a ball game right there. Game of the week. Game of the week. In uh, 3A, Heritage Hall remains number one after a 2013 win over 4A Clinton Red Tornadoes. The Seminole Chieftains remain number four after an 18-0 win over Tecumseh. And Seminole will travel to the rival We Woke of Bulldogs this week for a Seminole County war there. In Class 2A, Millwood stays at number one with a 56 beatdown over Douglas last week. The Vian Wolverines stay at number two despite a narrow 21-13 loss to... 3A Lincoln Christian. I think they're number two or three in 3A. Right. The Beggs Demons move move up to number three with a bye week, and they are at Shiloh Christian, Arkansas this Friday night. In Class B, Shattuck stays at number one with a 64-14 win over Burns Flat. The uh, Canadian Cougars stay at number two with a 52-6 win over Cave, Cave Springs, and they have killed a Lions this week. The Dewar Dragons move up to number seven after a 48-0 win over Caddo. And the Wetumpka Chieftains dropped to number eight after a 62-14 loss by Davenport. I didn't see that one coming at all. <clears throat> and that's it for our state rankings. You can check out more at okpreps.com. And when we come back, we'll have our third Barado Power of Connection poll. Big wireless companies keep getting bigger and bigger, but their coverage where you live is still small. At Bravado Wireless, we provide the best unlimited talk, text, and data for only $40 a month, right here in Eastern Oklahoma. You deserve to connect fast to your family, friends, and colleagues, wherever they are, with no interruptions and no excuses. Don't buy into big, go bold, go Bravado. Visit bravadowireless.com or visit one of our stores where we make it easy to join our family. Bravado Wireless, we believe in the power of connection. Welcome back, our third Bravado Wireless Power of Connection poll. This is the uh, week number three. Beggs Demons stay on top with a 2-0 record. Um, they were number one last week. Broken Bow Savages, 1-1. One one. Uh, the record 1-1, one one, so they stay at number two. The Seminole Chieftains move up two spots uh, to number three from their five spot. They're 2-0. Hilldale Hornets jump up two spots and their 2-0 record. Tahlequah Tigers jump up three spots from number eight to number five. You argued with me, me about that last week, right? Yeah. The Vian Wolverines one and one despite their loss, but they dropped down three spots. We just had some teams that had some good wins. The Ruffers uh, will stay at number seven at one and one. Dewar Dragons move up two, two and zero, oh, uh, two spots. Shakota Wildcats will stay at number nine at one and one, and the Canadian Cougars at two and zero. Oh, they weren't ranked last week, and they're going to uh, join us. Uh, this week, and the Wetumpka Chieftains dropped out. So, uh, any uh, any you do or don't disagree there? No, man. For once, I, I think you may have hit on something. I still I don't know much about Beg, so I guess I can't really comment on them. 
you know, they, they made it to the finals last year and they, they put a pretty good whooping on on Old Mogi week before last and so uh, once I think once the districts yeah. get rolling around we'll get a little bit better um, idea of what's going on with all these teams. Uh, very su very hap happily surprised with the Tigers with the win over Kilwita. The, yeah. And then uh, that uh, Shakota um, Hilldale game came down to the wire. I think Shakota and uh, Vianne, both teams that lost this week, mm -hmm. but I think that uh, though, I, in my opinion, they're both state contenders, and maybe they lot they will uh, learn more in their loss. And they lost to, to bigger schools. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. Um, so, all right, we're going to touch on some of the games this last week. Muskogee, uh, as Brian said, dropped a heartbreaker to Midwest City, 16-14. Tahlequah pulled off that upset over Coweta, 47-37. Poto knocked off McAllister. This score really kind of surprised me. Uh, I thought Poto was good, but they took it to a 5A team. They beat them 38-16. Haskell had a big win over Porter. I think they finally got their, everything going, 44-13 over Porter. And a big win for Idabel, uh, beating their rival, Hugo, 60-7. <laughs> Ogmogi got in the win column with a 26-10 over Tulsa Rogers. Seminole shut out Tecumseh 18-0. Valiant posted a big win, shutting out Tishomingo 36-0. Gore got past Mounds 34-14. Savannah with the big shutout over Liberty 48-0. And Midway snuck by Porham 26-12. And just a few of the scores in our coverage area, and here's a list of them all that will be coming up. So stick around, and when we come back, uh, we're going to take a quick commercial, but when we come back, we'll have Shakota head coach Chad Hendricks. There is truly no place like home. Right here in eastern Oklahoma, Bravado Wireless provides the best unlimited talk, text, and data for only $40 a month. We believe in strong, connected communities. That's why we live stream community events like local football games. You may not know us by name, but we'll be at the same festivals and cheering for our kids on the same sidelines. Because we live where you live. Visit bravadowireless.com or visit one of our stores where we make it easy to join our family. Bravado Wireless, we believe in the power of connection. Welcome back to the Bravado Blitz number three. We're on week three of the high school football season and joining us is Shakota Wildcat coach, Coach Chad Hendricks. Chad, thanks for being with us once again. You uh, led us off this season. So yes, uh, yeah. we're, we're thanks back. for having me. You bet. And uh, this week is the, uh, the huge rivalry game we have uh, you follow coming into town this week. Oh yeah, oh yeah, uh, big big game for us. Uh, you know we've we've been playing you follow for 103 years. You know, and uh, so we're excited and our kids are ready to play and get ready to go this week. If uh, for those of you who don't know, the Shakota you follow rivalry uh, is the longest uninterrupted rivalry in a high school football in the state of Oklahoma, and uh, it goes beyond football. It goes to uh, the uh, actually guns were drawn and some noses were bloodied fighting for the county seat. So this goes way beyond football, but it's a uh, it's a great friendly rivalry, and uh, I mean just 103 years. That's 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 something very special to, to have right there. Oh yeah, it is. You know and. Uh, you know, it's something when I came here, really didn't understand, you know, been through rivalry games and things like that, but not understanding the impact that the community has and the school has and the pride they take in this game has been very special. So right. I'm excited and, you know, our players are always excited to play this game. Now, uh, one thing real special it is, is, is you and Coach Newton are longtime friends up until this week. This week, you you know, you don't really communicate very friendly, right? Right. right? right. Well, that's the running joke. You know, I, when I when I took the job, you know, he was at uh, you fall. He actually left year before I did we were together at Sky Took and right. he took the father job and then I was fortunate enough to get hired at Shakota and he called me up and says man you know I can't believe you did that to <laughs> me you know so uh, and he said hey, we're friends up to that week and we can't be friends anymore and I right. said okay and, you know that was before I really understood what understood what the rivalry meant right. so but that's what's fun about it is uh, you know having the connections and everything and, and the schools aren't too terribly far apart and so a lot of the kids know each other and stuff um, so uh, going into this week do you have anything special that you're going to line up with uh, going up against Ufala? Oh, we're going to throw every trick play we got. Yeah. <laughs> no, no uh, our biggest thing, though, is coming, you know, we're coming off last week's game. You know, we, we want to improve and continue to get better. Uh, it is a big game, and we're going to do everything that we can to go win the football game. But, you know, ideally, it's still a non-district game. So we right. got to do those things to clean up the, the mistakes that we made a week ago. So mm -hmm. we're going to approach uh, this game like it is, you know, a big rivalry game. But we're going to make sure our players understand that we got to continue to get better. Right. Okay. Well, since you brought the topic up, let's talk about, you know, um, last 
last week's game, you guys played at Hildale, and uh, Hildale, a bigger school, they're a 4A school. Mm -hmm. Chicago's a 3A school. And, you know, Hildale's ranked number seventh in 4A, and uh, even though you guys lost 31-28, uh, you know, we talked off camera before we we started doing this. Was you? You almost. Uh, I mean, it's a loss, but it's almost kind of a victory because, I mean, you guys went toe to toe at a 4A school's place. Only lost by three points, mm -hmm. and played a very good ball game. Well, we did, we did, and we were very excited about that thing and how we and how we handled the game itself. Uh, you know, and and we told our, our kids after the game, you know, that we were proud of what they did and how we played, but there were still a lot of mistakes that we made. Mm -hmm. You know, when we went back and watched film on what we did that uh, we didn't deserve to win the game because we didn't play good enough to do that. Right. You know, we lost a couple phases of the game. We lost the turnover battle. They had two turnovers and mm -hmm. our takeaways from us, and we had two turnovers, and our special team play wasn't as good as theirs, and those are right. some of the factors that we teach them as we go into it that we got to get better in all phases mm -hmm. if, uh, you know, we want to truly really tr be good and try to make a run at it. And, you know, Hildale is a great football team, and like I said before, they're a great benchmark for us, a good, good way to look at how we're going to stand right. up and how we approach the season. So in all those areas, we were very excited about how we played and the character that we showed and the fight that we showed. So, Well, I was very impressed. Uh, both Hildale and Shakota uh, had a good game, and I was very impressed with your kids. And, uh, and I know what you're saying. You look at different phases of the game, you know, some penalties here and uh, uh, make that extra step for that block there, mm -hmm. and little things can change like that. Overall, it's a great game, and I think your kids did a, a fantastic well, thank job. Thank you. Thank you. They um, did. One thing I, I do want to point out that I was most impressed, that I was eager to see, was the offensive line play mm -hmm. against Hildale's defensive front. And I thought the offensive line did play a very good game. Oh, yeah, they played a great game. Um, you know, we, we came away with a little injury in there, a little banged up on that, but on, on our offensive line. But uh, that's one of our things that we've had. We've had some depth. So, you know, the next person up came in in the second half, and we were able to continue to move the ball and do the things we need to. And, and we knew that going into it, our strengths, our offense and defense line, because there's a lot of the same guys. And right. so that's where our experience is at. And, uh, and so they went out there, and they held their own. And, you know, it was, it was a great physical football game. And, you know, we had a lot of positive yards uh, rushing the football, so we're pleased with that. And, you know, our pass protection was good. Had a couple breakdowns here and there, but for the most part, they played a, played a solid football game. Uh, now we're going to talk, I want to ask you about Ufala's running game. Ufala uh, struggled a little bit against Vianne. They had some, some flashes of brilliance. Last week against Holdenville, three different running backs uh, really ran the ball well. Uh, three of them had over 80 yards rushing. Um, what do you do with that three-header monster? Well, it's the same thing. When you went back and you watched film on them from the last two weeks, and it's just like everybody else, you know, you're coming to week one, uh, and you've got, you know, a game plan together and things don't work out, so you change and adapt into week two. And that's right. where you see the most improvement from week one to week two, and that's what they did. Um, and they, they do a lot of things offensively. Uh, they change a little of their scheme-wise as far as different formations and what they're trying to be good at. And so. Right. You know, we're just going to go up to make sure defensively we're lined up, we're sound, you know, and that we're going to continue to run to the football and tackle well and, and put ourselves in position to make plays. Very good. All right, Coach, certainly uh, we always appreciate you well, coming thanks out. for having me. Golly, like, like I said two weeks ago, this is going to be kind of like the Shakota uh, <laughs> uh, video. I mean, we're, uh, we follow Shakota a bunch this year, uh, but we, we love those Wildcats. Folks, if you can't make it to the ball game, it's Shakota versus Ufala at Shakota High School. Shakota, um, it's, uh, is it Grand Staff Stadium or Grand Staff Field? Stadium. Stadium. Owen Grand Staff, yes. Owen Field, Grand Staff Stadium, Owen, yes. yes. Uh, lots of tradition down at Shakota. Uh, go check them out. Game starts at 7 o'clock and be there. If you can't be there, check us out. We will have it live on bravadotv.com. But thanks for sticking around. And do stick around because we have Coach Larry Newton coming up next for the Ufala Ironheads. So from the Bravado TV studios, stick around. We'll be right back. You are called to be bold. You have a right to the best wireless service, high-speed internet, and customer service at a price you can feel good about. At Bravado Wireless, we know this, and that's why we put you and your community first. We are owned and operated right here in eastern Oklahoma. We live where you live. We proudly connect you to your family, friends, and business partners wherever they are. Dallas, Seattle, Taipei, Toronto, and anywhere else in the world. We are Bravado Wireless. We believe in the power of connection. Welcome back, and 
We just talked to uh, Shakota's coach, Chad Hendricks, and we have his rival today. And uh, we have Coach Larry Newton from the U Ufala Ironheads. And Coach, thanks for coming up with us. Man, two weeks in a row we get to see you. Yes, thanks and once again. You bet. And we uh, sorry we didn't get to have the game last week. It was electrical storm coming in. And then we leave. And nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Maybe it was some good luck. It might have been. I don't know. But uh, like I said, at least you got out of there and uh, yeah. saved your equipment anyway, yeah. just in case. But I tell you what, always we always have fun going to U-Fall, always have fun going to Shakota. But uh, um, big win for uh, for your kids this last week over Holdenville. And uh, running backs had a nice game. And, uh, did, I mean, did you come out unscathed, injury-wise, all that good stuff? Yes, we come out pretty healthy. Uh, we was able to pull our uh, starters out there about midway to the third quarter, and mm -hmm. and uh, you know all the other guys stepped in and and uh, did a great job. So uh, you know we still had some injuries that uh, before you know from the Vian game right. that we're still uh, uh, trying to get those guys healed up. So mm -hmm. don't know if they're going to be ready this week, but you know uh, uh, the kids we have, they'll be ready to go. Now let's talk about your the running game looked very good Friday night against Holdenville. Uh, did you did you change anything different or was it just you know the kids uh, uh, ramped it up a little bit? Oh, the the offensive line did a better job. Mm -hmm. uh, they still got a ways to go. You know we're still young up front. Uh, we're missing our key lineman. Uh, you know Daniel Atwood that that is that senior leader up there and right. uh, with an ankle injury and don't know if he's going to be back. But uh, you know we're still kind of young and still learning stuff up mm -hmm. front. You know and still trying to mesh and and uh, one thing is uh, you know practice uh, it's hard to get them there uh, every right. day consistently to get right. some consistency right. and uh, like I said last week they did a better job of it and uh, it showed yeah well and it's, it's tough when you have those injuries and you can't go full speed sometimes all mm -hmm. the time um, but you know this is a rivalry 103rd meeting between Eufaula and Shakota and we talked you know coach Hendricks about that but at the same time I know as much as you want to win this rivalry game it is still a non-district game right it is but uh, this is this is the big one I mean right. it, it's just like a you know might as well be a district game right. but because uh, it you know it's the rights for the year and you know the past year they've had them mm -hmm. and uh, you know uh, I do a lot of things for you know Chad you know we're great friends right you now this week we're uh, we're enemies so, <laughs> right. and he knows that you right. know and uh, right. You know, and uh, I was the first one to congratulate him. You know, when he got the job, but I told him, you know, during this week, you know, we're, we won't be, we won't be too good a friend. That's that's what he said. <laughs> our interview earlier, he said that uh, he said we're good friends except for this week. And he said if, when I got hired, uh, Larry called me and said uh, we're not going to be friends this week at all. So, but that's that's what <laughs> that's that, great. Like I said, yeah, Chad's a great stuff. person, and uh, uh -huh. you know, I was fortunate enough to coach him at you know coach with him there at Sky Took, and right. and uh, he knows me, and I know him. Yeah, so that's what makes it so fun. And, and uh, both schools are great schools. Both have great leadership up and down the board mm -hmm. in the schools, and that's what makes it so fun. And that's what makes it great for us because we have such good relationships with both schools. Uh, all right, Coach. Man, uh, you know, Shakota, uh, they, they took a loss last week, but they took a 4A team all the way to the oh, final yeah. minutes. Oh, yeah. Uh, what do you tell your kids going into this game? Well, Hilldale, you know, talking to Chad, that's the same type of what kind of uh, uh, deal with us. You know, uh, they, they look at them kind of like a rival also. So uh -huh. they get almost back-to-back -back rivalry games. And, uh, you know, that they were ready to go and watching film. Uh, you know, they did an excellent job. You know, they had several opportunities to win the game. And, and uh, just was you know on the uh, on the wrong end of the you know the scoreboard. Right. But uh, they played hard. They played fast. Uh, they're going to be tough. You know they're going to be tough to deal mm -hmm. with. Well, I know you know we covered Shakota the first week and they played Keys and we kind of dubbed uh, Fisher, Shropshire, and and uh, Barrett kind of the triplets of the team. Mm -hmm. um, what what do you tell your defense going in? Um, I mean, is it contain Fisher, make Shropshire, or you know? Keep an eye on Shropshire. I mean, what do you do? Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be, you know, you're going to have to play your position. You know, right. you're going to have to have faith in the other guys around you and uh, do your job. You mm -hmm. know, don't worry about someone else messing up. Right. And you just got to stay consistent with what you do. And, you know, that's what we kind of did with Holdenville, you know, this last mm -hmm. week, you know, with them running option a lot and, and they're running, you know, the flex bone. And right. everybody had a job to do. And whenever they didn't do that job, that's when you've seen that, you know, the, the right. yardage rack up. But uh, uh, that's the big deal, you know, is fly to the football. They've got very good team speed, and mm -hmm. you know we have to react faster than what we usually do, and and uh, you, it'll be a challenge. But like I said, it, it'll be a fun game. Gang tackle, get your hands on somebody, and uh, make good tackles and stuff like that. I know that's going to be a, a key thing is keep your feet. But yeah, um, 
Yeah, big challenge for the U-Follower Iron, Ironheads. I mean, not taking anything away from uh, this young team, um, but it is, it's 2A going up against 3A. There's a little, mm -hmm. bit, little bit of difference there, and uh, we love both schools. But uh, it's uh, going to be a big feat, and uh, uh, fortunately, uh, unfortunately, I can't I can't root for either one of you. I have to be very <laughs> biased this week. But uh, uh, Coach Newton, always a great pleasure to have you up here. Thank you very much Thank for you coming guys. up. Appreciate and you. Uh, folks, check it out. If you can't make it to the ball game, you know this is a hundred and three year, hundred and third year. These two teams get together. Uh, you follow travels to Shakota. If you can't make it, watch it here on BravadoTV.com. And uh, Coach, good luck, and I hope everyone comes out unscathed. And uh, folks, we're gonna have some great football. I guarantee you these kids are gonna leave it all on the field because this is a McIntosh County war right here. And, and there's gonna be, a, there's probably gonna be a lot of aunts and uncles and grandma and grandpa's unhappy with each other this week, right? Oh, there, there'll be some husband and wives that'll be uh, <laughs> unhappy with each other this week. Right, right. <laughs> all right, well folks, stick around. We have more to come here at the Bravado Studios. And we have, uh, uh, when we come back, Brian Shows and I will break down our game of the week this week and uh, talk about some scores around the state and uh, all the good things happening here on The Blitz. Big wireless companies keep getting bigger and bigger, but their coverage where you live is still small. At Bravado Wireless, we provide the best unlimited talk, text, and data for only $40 a month, right here in Eastern Oklahoma. You deserve to connect fast to your family, friends, and colleagues, wherever they are, with no interruptions and no excuses. Don't buy into big, go bold. Go Bravado. Visit bravadowireless.com or visit one of our stores where we make it easy to join our family. Bravado Wireless. We believe in the power. Welcome back. And so we just got done with uh, Coach Hendricks from Shakota and Coach Newton from Eufaula. Uh, got to hear what they have to say about it. And uh, Shakota, um, man, they're loaded. I mean, I really, I really kind of feel for Coach Newton. Um, Coach Newton, you know, I don't, I don't want to say they're struggling, but he's, um, he's, he's waiting for some kids to step up, starting some freshmen, and uh, they're having to grow up real fast. But then again, Shakota, you know, they've got that freshman running back that's, that's doing phenomenal. I think struggle's a fair term for it, though, because uh, to get to where you want to go, you've got you've to endure that, to be as good mm -hmm. as you can be. Sometimes you've got to endure that. And they're young, so struggle's probably fair. Okay, let's, let's talk about you follow real quick. They had the... The loss to Vianne, uh the first week they had the uh, they beat. Oh, who makes their schedule? Yeah, <laughs> coach, they, call me. I'll get you. I'll get you set up. <laughs> they had Holdenville got the win at Hol got the win against Holdenville last week, and now they have Shakota. So they really have a, a brutal three game non district yeah. schedule. I mean, two of those three are top five teams in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, with Shakota, and we all know tradition rich Vianne, and they've got some transfers that, are, that has really taken them to another level. Right. So. Right. So, um, um, as a coach, do you just sit back and say, this is going to make us a better team? Yep. Yep. Just, we'll just take our lumps now, learn from it, mm -hmm. and uh, see how they do their business, you know? Right. How they take care of their business and learn from it. And, you know, two years down the road, we'll be ready to roll with them. Right. Uh, okay. If you're Shakota, uh, this is the 103rd meeting of the two teams, longest uh, interrupt in uninterrupted rivalry in the state of Oklahoma. So if you're Shakota, do you worry about one of those quote unquote trap games? I don't because it's a uh, it's a rivalry game. Mm -hmm. You know, I know from reading some of the uh, online stuff that they they felt really they felt like they played well enough to win last week against right. Hilldale. So there's some of that, but man, as a coach, since you have a rival coming up, it, nothing's easier than getting getting past that mm -hmm. tough loss and getting on to a rival. So Now, let's talk about that. It's a rival. Um, Shakota, they really had to uh, get up, get pumped up for that Hilldale game. Yep. Um, as a coach, are you worried about any kind of letdown, or, no. you know, are you are you happy you had this rival the next week? I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah, especially since they got through mostly unscathed. They had one maybe possible injury, but right. other than that, you know, those kids are young. They'll bounce back. Right. And I was I was happy with the way Shakota played. I mean, Shakota and Hilldale don't take anything away from them. They they won the game. They mm -hmm. played a great game. But I was really impressed with Shakota's uh, yeah. their offensive line going up against a bigger team. You know, we had them against Keys the first week, but I still think um, you know they were just a much better team than Keys. You know, yeah. So. And then the, again, we we touched on it when we were at Keys. I mean, they're led by a senior quarterback. Mm -hmm. They've got youth everywhere else, but that senior quarterback. What do you have? 130 yards rushing last right. weekend. Right. So. 
I mean, that's that's the key to it all. Mm -hmm. And we're going to touch on that because uh, coming up is our 5G, 4G, and 3G players of the week. And this time, um, I guess next next week I'll send you the ballot, but we all voted around the office, so oh. just wasn't wasn't myself. But we've got some feedback from the coaches, and uh, that's fantastic. So our 5G player of the week is going to be Tahlequah's quarterback, Tate Christian. Uh, he went 10 for 19 passing, 266 yards and five touchdowns, and that win over Coweta. Our 4G player of the week is Dakota quarterback Cade Shropshire. He passed for 151 yards and a touchdown. He rushed for another 131 yards and another touchdown, and they lost to Hilldale last Friday night. Then our 3G player of the week is Haskell's Tayden Lucero. Uh, he had 350 all-purpose yards, two rushing touchdowns, and two passing touchdowns versus Porter. So, um, uh, and we've got some uh, honorable mentions we're going to throw up on the screen also. And uh, it's nice to see all these kids around in our area getting putting some, up some recognition. Numbers. Yep. Yeah, putting up some numbers, get some recognition. So, um, Brian, this week we're at Shakota, and you follow at Shakota. Game time is seven o'clock, and big time rivalry. Um, I know you, your uh, your your lovely wife has uh, family down in Eufaula. So um, they're more they, Canadian though. More Canadian, mm -hmm. more course. Okay, well, especially this week, they're probably more Canadian. Yep. <laughs> Not Canadian, the company or yeah. their country. Canadian down there. Can it, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Shakota again. I was really, really impressed with that tailback and watching him grow through the years is going to be fun. And then watching that quarterback mm -hmm. lead him. So I'm, I'm really interested in watching the, the, that team evolve as the season goes along. Right. You know, one thing we forget about Shakota is uh, their starting tailback is gonna, he's out with a broken foot. Yep. So I mean, we kind of forget about that. The freshman's done so well. In the last uh, two weeks, we forget about the actual starting tailback or running back. Is, well, uh, the on-field interview gave you a hint, though, uh, after the game. He said, we've known, that coach said, we've known what he can do for a while now. Mm -hmm. So, he, you know, he kind of knew you guys are just coming around, but we've seen this kid. Right. So right. when his eyes lit up when he talked about him, man, that gave me a hint that this kid could be special. Right. All right, folks, Eufaula is traveling to Shakota for the McIntosh County War there. And uh, be sure and join us on bravadotv.com if you can't make it to the game. And uh, for myself, Eric Shannon here at the uh, Bravado TV studios and my co-host Brian Shows here, we certainly appreciate you sticking around with us. And uh, check us out this Friday night. Hopefully we'll, uh, the uh, storms will stay away so we can have a game. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So uh, until next time, we'll see you next week here at the Bravado Blitz. And have a great day if you want to.